Hospital discharge day for Fua Yang was more like a pep rally. On her way rolling out of Centennial Medical Center in Nashville, she teared up as streamers and confetti rained down on her. Nurses chanted her name as they wheeled her out of the hospital for the first time since she arrived in February with COVID-19, barely able to breathe. The 38-year-old mother is living proof of the power of ECMO, a method of oxygenating a patient's blood outside the body, then pumping it back in. Her story helps explain why a shortage of trained staff who can run the machines that perform this extracorporeal membrane oxygenation has become such a pinch point as COVID-19 hospitalizations surge. 146 days is a long time, Yang says of the time she spent on the ECMO machine. It's been like a forever journey with me. For nearly five months, Yang had blood pumping out a hole in her neck and running through the rolling ECMO cart by her bed. ECMO is the highest level of life support, beyond a ventilator, which pumps oxygen via a tube through the windpipe, down into the lungs. The ECMO process, in contrast, basically functions as a heart and lungs outside the body. The process, more often used before the pandemic for organ transplant candidates, is not a treatment. But it buys time for the lungs of patients who have COVID-19 to heal. Often they've been on a ventilator for a while. Even when it's working well, a ventilator can have its own side effects after prolonged use including nerve damage or damage to the lung itself through the excessive air pressure. Doctors often describe ECMO as a way to let the lungs rest, especially useful when even ventilation isn't fully oxygenating a patient's blood. Many more people could benefit from ECMO than are receiving it, which has made for a messy triaging of treatment that could escalate in the coming weeks as the Delta variant surges across the South and in rural communities with low vaccination rates. The ECMO logjam primarily stems from just how many people it takes to care for each patient. A one-on-one -on -one nurse is required, 24 hours a day. The staff shortages that many hospitals and hot zones are facing compound the problem. Yang says she sometimes had four or five clinical staff members helping her when she needed to take a daily walk through the hospital halls to keep her muscles working. One person's job was just to make sure no hoses kinked as she moved, since the machine was literally keeping her alive. Of all the patients treated in an ICU, those on ECMO require the most attention, says nurse Kristen Wynn who works in the ICU at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. It's very labor-intensive, she tells us one morning, after a one-on-one -on -one shift with an ECMO patient who had already been in the ICU three weeks. The Extracorporeal Life Support Association says the average ECMO patient with COVID-19 spends two weeks on the machine, though many physicians say their patients average a month or more, 